All right. Hey guys, Victoria here and welcome to the Geeky Sandbox. I know you can't see me, but you can hear me. And as I always say, I know that that's very frightening, but we're keeping things very chill today and we're doing an audio review with our friend Carolina. And we're going to be talking about, as you see right here in the top right corner, it is a spoiler. Uh, not a spoiler, really. It is going to be a non-spoiler review, but you already see what we're reviewing because you clicked on this video. It is the Bob's Burgers movie that came out just a little under a month ago. We finally had time to both see it and uh, we've had time to just kind of digest it. So just bear with us as we get through this, uh, this non-spoiler review. Hey, okay. So Carolina is here guys. And yeah, um, I pretty much said we'll, we would try to keep it short, but usually that's what I always say. But we'll we'll try to see how we can manage the time. I don't know. I don't know where to start. Well, first, you guys know that I really love Bob's Burgers because it's very apparent in a lot of the themes on my YouTube channel as well as my Twitch channel when I brought everything over there for a while. Um, I actually started watching Bob's Burgers when I was in college. Uh, because someone else had been watching it and they were super interested in it and they lived in my dorm. And so I was like, well, maybe this is something I would like. And I've been hooked ever since. Um, what is your experience with Bob's Burgers, Kettle? Um, I think it's probably like the ultimate comfort show for me. Mm -hmm. like, it's just like no matter what episode I start on, like it's always a good time. And it's like I'm part of the family. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say I totally agree. I feel like I can rewatch like there's always that meme and I think I posted that like reshared meme on my Facebook way, way, way back. But it's like that like the two highway exits where you can like, watch a new show or rewatch Bob's Burgers for the 5000th time. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel like that's yeah. that's so relatable because like you said, it's a comfort show. Like I really like the family. I feel like there's some like relatable things that can go on with the family, even though some of it can be exaggerated, obviously for the show and it's like nature. It's, it's still an animated comedy show about a family. Um, but you know, what kind of makes them different than some of the others is like, they are a family that are just trying to make it because with family guy and something like, um, like the Simpsons, there still is that like middle class type of thing that they have going on. But I feel like I, maybe that is kind of a stretch because Homer and Peter, they do struggle and they've changed jobs a billion times throughout their series, right? Granted, they've been on for ever, many, many, many years. Bob's Burgers is just like the junior baby right now. Um, but, and of course the show is about Bob's job and his family being involved in all of that. So I think that's what makes it different. But I do feel like in a sense, Bob, as a parent, um, struggles a little bit more in, re in regard to like, just trying to keep the a roof over their heads, I think. Whereas like, you know, Homer and I, I wouldn't even go as far as to say, uh, Peter is more of a like, gimmicks guy, right? Um, and you don't have like the gimmicks going on with Bob himself. You may, you may get the gimmicks out of his children. And I think that's kind of like what sets the show apart. So it is like this, it does fall into that category of being this like family animated show, but it's still a thing of, um, it, it, it still has its own unique charm. I think. My favorite part about the Belchers, especially with the parents or how supportive they are oh yeah of their kids i think they get that award um yeah they might struggle but i feel like their love and commitment to each other as a family is like i think what resonates and what makes the show so comforting oh that's such a good point i agree if you do line up those parents and i'll try to add some pictures and posts you know you have your marges and homers and lois's and peters and there is just something so different about the way Bob and Linda are <laughs> with their kids, especially Linda. I always felt like if they ever did a crossover with Bob's Burgers and any, in any of the other family animated shows like that, that it would be breathtaking to see Linda interact with like them because there's, she's so different. <laughs> and I can see them finding her annoying, but I love her so much. I would actually say, I think Linda might be my favorite character. And I know uh, that's always a hard one. Um, who would you say is your favorite character? Oh, that is a hard one. I don't know. I feel like mine toggles from week to week. I think right now, uh, Bob is probably first place, but 
I think like a couple weeks ago, Jean was it. I guess it depends on how I'm feeling. I'm like, yeah, today's Bob, or yeah, today's <laughs> but they're all great. Yeah, they really are. And um, except for Jimmy Pesto. Oh, except for Jimmy Pesto. Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> To keep it super simple without giving everything away, uh, the movie is pretty much like it's structured like a Bob's Burgers episode, but like it, it happens over the course of multiple days um, and it's leading up to summer. And one of the things I thought the movie was going to be about at first was that it was going to be them and this family like having their summer adventure. But I thought it was a nice take that it was them getting ready for summer and whatever that was going to mean for each individual character. I would say the movie is pretty much about another day at the restaurant except Bob and Linda in the restaurant are in trouble and they're trying to figure out how to save the restaurant before um like by a certain time and so you kind of have that going on and so of course you have other things happening in the background but would that be a good way would you describe if you were trying to tell someone what this movie was about without spoiling anything would would that be a good description yeah definitely keep a race yeah to beat that deadline, yeah, yeah, and and no, and and I I know me, I like a really good um, let's come together to try to like fix something type of situation, uh, especially because we're used to like maybe there being some hiccups with the restaurant, but this one is like the biggest thing we've seen where you know they actually are in trouble and the stakes are really high, and I think they did a really good job with that in regard to the script. Um, I think the pacing was really good. The movie never felt long to me. And I will say, like, I saw it with uh, my cutie, Steven, and he is not a, like, he's not like a religious Bob's Burgers fan or watcher like me. And he was still able to enjoy the movie and understand who the characters were in this family and be, like, rooting for the family, too. And and that was, I think that that says a lot about the movie, that even if someone's seen, you know, a handful of episodes and they may know the show <laughs> because of their their partner, they can they can still grasp what's happening without having to have watched like a hundred episodes of the show. Super accessible to the non regular viewer. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, how did you feel about the pacing of the movie? Did it ever feel like it, it dragged along for you or did it feel like it just was perfect? Perfect. I was enjoyed it i laughed i was at the edge of my seat i was you know suspenseful it was no complaints yeah like sometimes with movies like this because this is bob's burger's first film um i feel like it's it's always hyped up and i think that whenever a cartoon or animated show or anime or whatever gets its own movie i feel like or even like uh just regular like basic TV shows whenever they get an opportunity to make a film it's really hyped up and sometimes the hype like the movie doesn't live up to the hype and I feel like Bob's Burgers really did um they didn't try like they they were able to try some some new things and not not in a way that made you uncomfortable as a fan you know like something that was like oh that's kind of weird for this character to do that i never had that type of feeling i think for their first movie that they did a great job one thing that i wasn't expecting is there were like obviously in the tv show they do sing and dance but it's not like frequent and so they uh, dabbled in that a little bit in the movie and it was a little more than I thought, but I still enjoyed it. The people in my theater did too. I think everybody had a really good time with that. I um, enjoyed the musical numbers. Uh, as far as I wasn't really surprised, I think the whole movie, I went in there with like zero expectations. I mm -hmm. tried not to read about it or anything and um, yeah, I enjoyed every second of it. Yeah, same here. I definitely went in um, blind because I just wanted to be able to take it in. I didn't read any reviews either, so it was nice. Um, I think I went maybe two days after it came out. So, um, And I know you went a little later too. So it's, it's one of those things where avoiding everything on the internet is <laughs> it's always a challenge. Because, yeah, because when other people are excited about like something like that, they can't, they have to talk to somebody about it. And sometimes if they can't tell their friends, they'll tell the internet about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, it was nice going in blind because, you know, I got to really just take in the whole experience with these characters. Yeah. And 
I'll even say like, um, for me, I don't think anyone dropped the ball with the, the voice acting and the performances and delivery of the characters. I thought it was really, really good. I wish Bill Meter was still voicing Mickey, but oh yeah, I, <laughs> I will say. You know what I'll say? I say one of the characters that um, got I got a lot of laughs out of was obviously Jean because Jean has like those really great one-liners that are so good. Like I know a few times he like shocked Stephen because Jean says anything, and Stephen. <laughs> Steven had an audible moment where he was like, oh my God, <laughs> but he like laughed and I was just like, yeah, this is what this is about. Um, the guy to my right was just laughing out loud, like literally, um, no shame. And it was just nice being in a, a shared space with other Bob's Burgers fans. And that was one of the things I was saying when people would ask me like, okay, what did you think of the movie? I know you were excited for this. It was nice being in there with other fans. Um, or people that were at least willing to give it a try. Like everybody was very chill. And I would even say this, it probably was the most respectful theater experience I've had since the pandemic started because I've seen a few movies. Like um, I saw the Batman and um, the Batman is the one that comes to mind first, but like the, some of those experiences were so like rude ish. I would even say, I think I can't remember when, do you remember when, I can't remember when Halloween Kills came out. I don't remember. I think that was also during the pandemic because I feel like I remember wearing a mask. But like people were talking during that and like, not like a hush whisper chat that you would have with like your, your friend or your partner or sibling or whatever, but it was like loud talking and people coming in late for the Batman movie. And I was happy that with the Bob's Burgers movie, these were people that wanted to be there. And no, no, nothing against people that come into a movie late because uh, things happen. But like, you know, if you come in late, I'm like, just kind of be quiet about it. But for the Batman, they were so loud whenever they were coming in. And like with Bob's Burgers, people were there on time. People really wanted to experience this movie from beginning to end. Um, most of us stayed throughout the entire, like with the credits too, because there's something... Um, there by the way if you do see it stay for the post credit scene there is one and it's like a little little something fun nothing like significant but i thought it was like it was fun i guess i have to go watch it again <laughs> i thought all the songs in the movie were really great um i thought the the way that they would segue into a song didn't feel odd zach galifianakis was in the movie and i'm highlighting him because He's not a regular in the show um, and he fit very well into like the type of energy and vibe that the show has. Like I, if I had never seen the movie before, I would think he was always in the episodes and I thought he did a really good yeah. job fitting that character he plays into an already existing family. Teddy was great trying to be part of the Belchers. Oh yeah, Teddy. Well, I think I remember one of my favorite lines that made both of us laugh uh, when Teddy yells at uh, Bob, and I was like, "Bob, grab your meat!" And Bob oh says, yeah! Don't yell that! <laughs> I totally forgot that happened. Oh my god! Oh, that was really good. <laughs> he, I don't know if it's a spoilery, but is he the one that said uh, the burger of the day was to be Killy from Carney? Was he the one that said that, or was it Louise? I remember, it, it sounds like a Louise thing, but I remember laughing at that, too. Kelly Kukarni. That is so good. I think it might have been him. <laughs> <laughs> if someone who has never seen Bob's Burgers ask you why they should go see this movie, what would you say? I would say because it is such a good time, and you don't need to have seen any of the other episodes, and... Like I did, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna cry, you're, well, maybe not cry, but you're gonna be at the edge of your seat. And it's just hilarious. It's more than I expected. Aww. Yeah. I, guess I would say the same thing. It's, I feel like there was a nice range of like emotions there. I was trying to explain to Steven that they're, they try to like, because we know Tina's fears and like stuff like that. But and even with Jean, like we've had episodes where we learn more about Jean and like um, him being on the spectrum, you know, different things like that. But I feel like with Louise, we kind of get the 
same note, but not a bad note, if that makes sense. Like we know that she's tough and she is very good at like swindling people and she's still a loving sister and daughter. But I feel like we don't we don't have that vulnerable side of Louise. And I feel like I walked away from this movie learning something new about Louise, which is a whole side point that I wanted to make. And I would say that for people who have seen the show and think they don't need to see the movie that think they know everything about the movie, I'll say, mm, just you wait. There's there's more that you can learn about this family. And even people... Yeah, even people like Teddy and Mr. Fish Older and just I just think that there's more there. I feel like you can go into this movie and you'll like suspend your disbelief and be super invested in this family and everything that they have going on. I think you'll leave the movie at least interested to watch a few episodes if you've never seen it before. What would you rate this movie out of five geeks? I'd rate it. Say five. <gasps> I, yeah. I would say five to you for this being the first Bob's Burgers movie. The delivery was great. The script was nice. I thought the characters were even more lovable than they were before like the movie came out. I just think it just, it only added to what's already there. It didn't take away anything. And that makes me like super happy. I guess with that guys, um, that's it for the review. Um, Carolina, did you, did you want to plug anything? I make it sound like I have a podcast. Stay inside, avoid the sun. That's all I gotta say. Oh, that's really good advice. Please stay inside. <laughs> I would say if you are going to be outside and even if you're going to be inside, Stay hydrated. I guess I'm plugging water, who we are not sponsored by. Obviously, you guys know you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the geeky sandbox, and that's where I play video games. And sometimes we'll try to have discussions like this. Obviously, I have a gaming channel aside from my film channel. I've been uploading a lot there. Um, I'm trying to make sure that I have a perfect or at least nice balance of uh, uploading to both channels. It's a lot of work, but fortunately, my schedule is starting to uh, even out a bit, so that feels good. Uh, but yeah, you can find me on Twitch. You can find me on my other YouTube channel. Um, also, I'm on Twitter as Victoria Woe. That's W-H-O-A. I know there's a little debate and argument about how Woe should be spelled. But I spell it W-H-O-A. So Victoria Woe. Uh, but yeah, feel free to check me out there. And again, thank you, Carolina, for doing this review with me. I appreciate it. And you? Yeah, anytime. <laughs> thank you. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! I'm waving from my desk. Catalina's waving. We're saying goodbye. Bye! Bye.